The following is an excerpt from Chapter 3 of Applied Sciences in the 20th Century, The United States and Beyond, by Richard P. Brennan, published by Chronicle Books in 1997, read by William Roberts. During the Cold War, the United States government was engaged in a bout of wartime spending that had far-reaching effects for the greater scientific community. The economic boom from the end of the Second World War had ushered in a new generation of scientists, along with a wealth of research, and a large number of potential consumers for applied sciences companies. In the late 1960s, the Reagan administration decided to auction off the federally owned Black Mesa Launch Complex, a partially completed and expansive network of rocket silos and research laboratories situated around the Black Mesa Hydroelectric Dam in New Mexico. This complex had eight large missile silos that were initially designed as the new focus point of nuclear launch capabilities in the USA. However, the Reagan administration deemed it too central a target in the case of a potential ballistic missile attack, and as such, construction efforts were ceased. During the auctioning process, a modest Florida-owned laboratory by the name of McDermott Rocketry and Research obtained funding from a large number of American investors and subsequently purchased the launch complex from the United States government in December of 1968. McDermott Rocketry and Research were relatively obscure at the time, but with their purchase of the Black Mesa complex, they had become one of the largest applied science companies in the world in terms of contiguous real estate held, and in July of 1970, they changed their name to Black Mesa Research Laboratories. The Black Mesa Laboratory was publicly oriented with several applied sciences breakthroughs in their first two years alone. Within five years, the facility was completely self-sustaining, employing over 1,000 personnel in its operation. Of note were its pharmaceutical and rocketry divisions, with the former issuing a drug called acovelacetine in 1981. This drug, nominally a steroid, was injected topically and paired with small doses of intravenous morphine to promote extremely rapid healing of cuts and abrasions. This was immediately adapted for use in hospitals internationally, but legislation reduced its sale due to concerns of it exacerbating illegal opioid use. Acovelocytine, however, was just the first of a series of radical scientific breakthroughs from the Black Mesa facility. 1982 saw several federally backed GPS satellite launches as well as the world's first ever privately owned rocket launch, the Lambda 6, funded entirely through investor support and Black Mesa's own capital. In 1983, a form of powered ballistics resistant padding was developed for the United States Army which was later released to consumers in the form of bulletproof vests and industrial protective equipment. Two years later, in 1984, a Michigan rival applied sciences company, Aperture Science, re-entered the consumer market. Unlike Black Mesa, Aperture was old blood. Initially a furnishings and fixtures company, Aperture had pivoted to applied sciences in the post-World War II economic boom. However, some aborted and disastrous attempts to market pharmaceuticals in the late 60s led to Aperture becoming a notoriously secretive company, and officially, they had actually been bankrupt for several years. When their longtime CEO Cave Johnson passed away in 1983, the former General Electric chairman John Francis Welch Jr. was pegged as a suitable replacement, and the Aperture Corporation surprised many by overcoming bankruptcy after a series of extremely successful and highly confidential demonstrations to prospective investors. Their streak continued with them winning a contract to provide automated military-grade hardware to the U.S. Air Force. This placed the Aperture Science Corporation in competition with Black Mesa, albeit a still highly secretive one. While their former CEO, Cave Johnson, had made headlines in 1944 for publicly purchasing a Michigan salt mine, presumably the site of their main facility, 
The exact dimensions of the Aperture Science Facility have never been revealed, with employees operating under strict non-disclosure agreements. It is for this reason that their threat to Black Mesa was speculative at best, with some commonly agreed upon areas of competition being artificial intelligence and theoretical physics. This competition continued, however Aperture's output had dwindled from 1986 onward. Public patents by the company were exceedingly rare and government funding largely withdrawn. George H. W. Bush went as far as to describe them as isolationist in a now infamous television interview during his 1988 campaign and government funding for Aperture was reportedly minimal from 1990 onward. During this period, Black Mesa had also slowed its own output of consumer-grade electronics and pharmaceuticals and was going through its largest influx of hiring since the 70s. Personnel at the Black Mesa facility numbered in excess of 1,700 in 1995 and construction began on several state-of-the-art laboratories to expand its already considerable size. Today in 1998, over 60% of the facility is regarded as top secret, a fact that has given the facility a public identity somewhat similar to that of Area 51 in Nevada albeit much larger. This image has only been reinforced by Black Mesa's most recently announced technologies, one being a government-commissioned high-performance computer core designed to steer a rocket to low Earth orbit autonomously, and the other being the hazardous environment vehicle, a wearable full-body suit of Black Mesa's own high-impact reactive armor unveiled on the World Wide Web for the 1996 World's Fair. Both technologies, however, remain unavailable for consumer use, and multiple delays have meant that Black Mesa's next widely adapted technology has become endlessly speculated upon and eagerly anticipated.